Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC out in the Royal Woods again looking at another excellent backpack from the beautiful country of Poland. Today we are looking at the Direct Action Halifax bag. Now this is a set of different bags, I guess, I suppose it is different bags. There are a few of these. Um, but it's something that I've had my eye on for a while. I've had a look at, at quite a few uh, direct action products, but mainly they've been like pants and shirts, that sort of stuff. Always been super curious about their bags. So they brought out the Halifax range and it just got my bag, knee, bag geek kind of senses tingling, let's say and I'm happy to announce that it's an awesome bag. So as we usually do, let's turn the camera around and take a closer look. So the bag itself, as we usually do, we will go through some, some measurements, some materials, and then we'll have a look around the features of the pack itself. Just to be clear and to cl clarify something at this point, this is the Halifax Medium. There is a smaller version. I believe there's a large version as well. I probably should have checked that. Uh, but this is, the, uh, this is the medium version, which is the 40 litre version. I'll put the exact measurements down here for you. But yes, uh, 40 litres, which is great. Uh, everything that I bought out today, the rope, my tripod, all of my filming equipment, I was able to pack into this bag for a guy like me that always seems to carry a little bit too much. 40 litres is great, but then it means I'm going to carry even more, but um, it certainly meant that whilst I've been testing this, walks and stuff that I've been able to do um, with my daughters, dad can you carry this for me kind of thing, that I've not really had to worry about room or anything like that. Now as far as materials are concerned, direct action, um, they just excel at that all, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the main material on the outside, this is all a 500D genuine Cordura. It's available in three or four different colors. This is the shadow gray version. Um, all of the zippers are YKK zippers. Um, they're all the reverse coil RC newer style zippers. There is, a, there is an AquaGuard zipper here at the back, which we'll have a look at. All of the webbing, mill spec webbing on here. The buckles are all tough Wujin buckles, which I like. I'm a fan of Wujin buckles. Um, I, I've certainly not had any issues with any of the, uh, the the bags that I've tested with Wujin buckles on here. The vast majority of the buckles, especially here, like on your compression straps, um, all have one of these little silent hoods on here. So when you're putting the buckles in and out, they make less noise. Um, I guess I probably haven't touched on this, but I think the one thing to really talk quickly just about direct action is that they are the higher tier military gear for similar to Helicon Tex. Now Helicon Tex and Direct Action Polish Company, um, they are one and the same. Um, Helicon Tex make very good military gear that is, you know, it, it's designed for military people but also for civilians as well. Um, with direct action, you know, they're that tier above that. So they, they put a lot more thought into this. Now weirdly, over the last three or four years, Helicon Tex have actually bridged the gap and they, they've definitely got closer to the quality and the detail that you expect from direct action, which is nice to see Helicon Tex have moved up to that point. Um, but yes, with direct action, there's just a, a lot more thought into this. But on that point, this is designed for the military so some of the things on here are operations specific kind of things this is a bag that you can jump with if you need to so some of the creature comforts that you might possibly expect from a more aim towards the civilian style which you know you will see with this um, some of those creature comforts have gone but little kind of details like the silent pulls all of that stuff even down to, I know I'm kind of ruining it here, but um, so this does have quick release harness, but rather than the ones that you pinch, you just pull these like you get with some of those fast buckles so that you pull them, bosh, it's off. Very nice. 
anything else that I've missed. Uh, hook and loop, there is quite a bit of hook and loop through this. Um, Pals webbing all through the front. Now what you'll find with this, similar to the Dragon's Egg 2, um, Direct Action were one of the first major manufacturers to really go all in with laser cut uh, Pals webbing. So laser cut all through the front and the sides and there's also some laser cut inside as well. Um, and it is on either the um, Cordura or there is some hook and loop on the inside which is also laser cut Pals webbing so that you can either hook and loop onto that or you can molly system onto that as well. Cool, I think that was everything. So let's get into the features of the bag itself. Now starting at the bottom, as I always tend to do, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually going to turn this round, main, there's a load of crap that I've got on it already. Um, is, is look here, so there is a uh, there is a storage compartment here on the bottom. Now what I have in here is, is the belt. So this does come with a removable belt, which hopefully you'll be able to see how you can attach that. Um, but whilst this isn't, I'm gonna put that down there for a second, whilst that's not in use, you can store it here in this pocket at the bottom. If you wanted to as well, now it doesn't come with one, but if you wanted to add a rain hood to this, especially if you know that you're gonna be out and you're definitely gonna be getting wet, then it's a good place to be able to store that. As far as waterproofness, it's not a word, but it is now. Um, like with all Cordura, this has a DWR coating on here. Um, being caught in a shower or a light to kind of medium style rain, uh, the water will brush off it. Anything closer to a heavier rain, um, then it will start to come in. I suppose an extra point on that, you know, th it doesn't have taped seams, which is gonna let some water in. The zips on here, apart from one here at the back, are all of the RC style zips, which again will let water in after some time. Um, but the DWR coating should keep it uh, dry if you need to get to somewhere so that you can um, you can find shelter. Then on the back here, you also have some loops, so these can be used to affix things onto here. There are also corresponding loops on the front. Now these loops on the front mainly can be used for uh, stowing axes or other equipment that you want to. However, because you have one loop here on the front and one loop here on the back, if you have some paracord or some spare cord, you can, you can daisy chain between those so that you can then stow something onto the bottom. Now as far as kind of old fashioned fixture points here on the bottom, there isn't any. It's a fairly flat bottom to ensure that there are no snags or no kind of hang-ups that you can get on things. However, as I mentioned, you do have these at the front and the back, so if you have a bedroll um, or, or anything that you want to attach to the bottom here, you can sling it underneath, ratchet that down, make sure that it's nice and safe. Coming through the front, I'm just going to pull these over, mainly because while I was just in it then, these are, uh, these are some protection bits. So this is a full clamshell opening. You'll see in a minute how, how, how this opens, but it is a full clamshell opening that swings around right under to the base here. So rather than being a clamshell that just comes down to the front and then that kind of lifts forward like a drawbridge kind of thing, this swings all the way down. I'm sure I saw something on the Direct Action website where they had a soldier demonstrating that they'd opened this out, laid it down flat and splayed it out and they they were using it uh, as, a, as a mat to find a firing position from, um, which is kind of cool, but I think that's mainly because of that. But here on these corner bits, hopefully you'll see that there are some guards. Because this can go di directly down onto these zips, they wanted to make sure that they were protected as much as possible um, from just crap from getting into them or just bits from hitting it uh, to make sure that they are, yeah, they're, they're protected. Now quickly on the sides, uh, on the sides, what you see on this side is exactly the same as you see on this side, apart from this bottle of iron brew that I had for, I've forgotten that I got there. Uh, so you have pockets on each side. The pockets are reasonably deep they're probably about seven, maybe eight inches deep, and they're also nice and wide as well if you need to be able to fit a one liter Nalgene bottle. One of the wider ones with the wide mouth openings, you can easily fit one of those into here. 
uh, when I come out, although I have my, I have my seat, seat mat in here, um, I keep my seat mat in here as well, just, just to make it so it's easy to get to. Uh, but the compression strap here on the side, the bottom compression strap, there are actually two, this bottom compression strap also goes around that. Now the elastic on the opening here is ridiculously tough and it's actually quite firm. You do have to give it a bit of a pull to get stuff in. I like that mainly because when there's nothing in there, it sits very flat. But if you wanted to, if maybe if you're out, you're doing some bushcraft with this and you want to put an axe into here, you can put your axe into here, put the handle through here, strap that down, strap the bottom down and it'll make sure that that doesn't come out. Now, as I mentioned, what you have on that side, you have exactly the same on this side as well. Now above that, you then have a molly panel or some laser cut pals webbing here on the side. As far as the columns are concerned, there are three columns and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight rows of pals webbing there so that you can attach anything to the side here. Um, here is your bottom compression strap and then you also have a second compression strap here at the top. I do like that they've put a lot of strap management on here so wherever there is a strap because there can be some loose um, then you've got some of this hook and loop so that you can you can kind of spin that round. I know a lot of you like to keep them rigid you like to make sure that they're fixed so a bit of bit of sniper tape and you'll be able to uh, able to sort that out straight away. Both of these also have that um, uh, one, one of those close, uh, one of those silent closures on there. Struggling from words there for a second. Now getting back to the front here, hopefully you'll be able to see that you have this large panel for laser cut pals webbing, which you can attach anything that is Molly compatible to here. As far as the columns are concerned, it goes four columns by, I don't know, 12 or 15 kind of deep there, um, plenty enough. I do also like the fact that it's four across, you find a few where it's five across and then things don't sit perfectly in the middle. So if you're the type that wants to make sure that it sits perfectly in the middle, because you're super conscious about weight management and that sort of stuff, it will sit and make sure your OCD doesn't kind of tingle for a bit as well. Now behind here, Hopefully you'll be able to see, so there are two more protectors here on the side and then you have these old fashioned big beefy number 10 zips. Um, this is for the direct action Spitfire. So the direct action Spitfire panel is a utility panel that will zip directly onto this. I guess it's one of those ones that you call like a mission specific kind of um, panel. So if you need to take that off so that you can swap it, you've got different equipment, whatever it is. Or maybe if you're using this for bushcraft and you've got some stuff in the front, you get to camp, you want to take it off, you can just take that off so that you've got it on the front or you can take it off to put it separately to do something else. Maybe you want to put your cooking stuff in there or whatever it is, but they're sold separately. Uh, and yes, it fixes here uh, and here on the front. I haven't got one of those, but if people are interested in that, then maybe I can pick one of those up as well. Yes, so that's your main panel here on the front. Moving up a little bit further, we have uh, a uh, hook and loop section here, which you can put some morale patches onto. In front of that, there is a pocket, which I have some gloves in at the moment, uh, but this pocket is uh, fleece lined. Now I say fleece lined, it's, it's hook and loop, but it is the lighter hook, or, no, it's the lighter loop of the hook bit so if you wanted to add a um, add some sort of an administration kind of strip in here uh, that was backed with hook and loop then you can attach it here but also if you want to put in some uh, optics that sort of stuff you can put it in here as well and it'll make sure that it's not going to get scratched uh, really good place to stow your mobile phone again just keeping it separate from other things now if you did really want to manage that a little bit more, so here is that first pocket but there is also a second pocket here which is even larger. Now if I take this off just for a second, 
show you into this pocket mainly because on that first pocket it's just hook and loop on on this side on on the bottom side whereas with this one it's also hook and loop here at the top I have my car keys in here um, this is a, a lot larger pocket it goes from the back here all the way to the front where this front seam is so I know I mentioned on that front one that it's good for optics that sort of stuff but I think, strictly speaking, that is the pocket that you meant to put that sort of stuff into because you're getting 360 protection with the hook and loop and the, the, the felt that's all around whatever it's in there. Whereas maybe this front one, um, maybe you're out. You've got something CCW, maybe, I don't know. But um, with, with this one, you're only getting protection from the bottom. So there you go. Now the main pocket, actually sorry, there's one thing that I forgot to mention. So here on the sides underneath this compression strap uh, you have a hydration hose uh, hole here. Now as I mentioned before this is the same on one side is exactly the same on the other side here and then you also have a, a similar hole here for a hydration bladder hose to be able to come out of. Um, if it is that you don't want it to come out so you, you prefer it to come out of the center I mentioned a couple of times that here on the back let's move these out of the way you do have an aquaguard zip here um, as this is designed for military use this is so that if you have a radio system in here and you need your antenna or something like that to come out of the top, uh, then you can put it so that it goes either side because this will zip open from either side to allow that antenna, whichever side it needs to come out of, to come out of there. And then you can pull this tight around that to hopefully stop any water from getting in from this opening. Or if you wanted to, there's no reason why you couldn't have your hydration bladder coming out of there. You can still have it a little bit orientated to the left or the right, but you could use it either side um, and it would just give you maybe a little bit more freedom rather than it coming in here and then round and over your shoulder. It will be directly behind you and then, uh, and then over your shoulder. Now back onto the main compartment, which I was trying to get to. Main compartment on this, this is a single compartment bag. Now I, I know I've talked about these other little pockets that are around here, but the other smaller pockets are quick access pockets that you can put bits and bobs into that you just need to get quick access to. Um, the main compartment on this pretty much is, I would say it is the full 40 litres, probably 39 litres if you take into account all of the other smaller pockets around it. But this is your main bread and butter, so to speak. Now when you open this, I like how they've done the, uh, the compression straps. The compression straps, if you pull them down and you don't unfasten these two compression straps, then this, the, the front lid will splay open and you get access to another piece of internal storage in here. The pocket on this goes directly across the front. It's probably about 10 inches wide by about seven or eight inches deep. Um, this really nice tough mesh uh, and a zipper on there so that you can get into it, get what you need, close it back up again. I like the fact that how this orientates that when this folds down, it folds down so this is your pocket. You go directly into the pocket from above. It's a little thing, but it's, it's stuff like that that makes sense. Now on the inside here, I have just kind of brought out some random things today. So I've got, I've got a waterproof, I've got my film, some filming equipment. I've got that seat, a couple of seating mats, which I've mentioned. Um, so once you then get past the first set of compression straps or these, these buckles, you can then pull it down and it will come further down until you get to the next set of compression straps. So. As I mentioned with that, um, the, the drawbridge style um, opening, you can pull it down to here and just get this to open like that so that you've got what you need. It's not gonna completely splay open. I do have some important mission critical contents in here and I'm also happy to confirm that this is a tactical teddy bear compliant uh, bag 
Polish are getting very good at ensuring that the Kingdom of the Morelands is contacted so that they can find out whether they are tactical teddy bear compliant and I'm happy to announce this one is so it gets a tick. Now I do have a couple of other things in here because we're making some flashlight content today as well. But I did mention, kind of going over some additional points, but I did mention that this does come all the way down. So if I pull this now down into these corners, yeah, one of those pinch things, it's come off something, but I'm not sure what it's come off. This is where I mentioned, so this can be 100% fully splayed open like this. So if you did need to put this down, fold these out so that it will 100% will lie flat, you certainly can do with this. Now whilst it's open, looking on the inside here, hopefully you'll be able to see all through this, this panel here, the back of this has that same hook and loop. So if you do need to attach anything to here, you can do and it will, it will fit on. The front panel as well also has the same hook and loop, which again, so whilst you're opening this up, if you have specific things that you want to keep on the front, then you can do. To add to that as well, it is also the same through these side panels, which splay out as well, should you need to as well. Whereas this back panel, it's just, these will make sense in a second. Whereas this back panel, this is where the uh, this is where the PALS webbing comes into this, and this is laser cut PALS webbing. There is a, um, a fastener here at the top, so if you want to put a, a hydration bladder into here, you can do. I'd say this will fit any bladder. I don't know specifically which one they say, oh, it'll fit up to, but with the size of this, a three liter bladder is easily gonna fit into here with no issues whatsoever. You also have across the top, there is a zip here, which takes you in to the back panel. Now, it does, trust me, it does come out, but for the sake of me not swearing whilst making this, here is uh, here is here is your frame sheet. So the frame sheet in this is a is a hard kind of plastic material, but then there is also some um, rigid support into here. If you wanted to, of course, you could completely take this out, which will help to reduce some of the weight. Not a massive amount, but it will help to reduce some of the weight. Um, it's also designed with the respect that if this needs to be worn over a plate carrier, you can take that out as well, which will make a little bit of sense again on, on the back in a moment, just to help it to conform to the back of the plate carrier rather than just being completely rigid ac across the back of it. Uh, but it, it has that option too. And the last little bits, I know I've mentioned as far as being able to attach things, you have all of this laser cut pals webbing here, but in the top corner here and here, and then in the bottom corners here and here, there are also some hard lashing points. So again, I think mainly designed for things like your radios, that when that is in here, if you want to put some, uh, you want to lash that on, or if you've got some of that meshing, you can put your radio into here, put that meshing onto the front to make sure that your radio is not moving around um, and, well, not moving around. So yes, so there you go. Now, getting back to these additional bits here. Actually, let's just, let's get this zipped up. And as we turn around to the back, I'm just gonna pull the straps out of the way for a second. Because I was mentioning that back panel. Now the back panel on this, as far as the creature comforts are concerned with padding on this, the padding on this is what I would call minimal. The reason for that, as I mentioned before, is because this can be worn over a plate carrier, it's, it's designed not to destroy the padding that's on. The padding, the strips that are on here, do a good job. The, um, the padding that is, it's like, a, it's like egg crate, egg box kind of padding. Um, direct Action have very nice padding, so they just have these two minimal strips that uh, cushion either side of the spine, but don't produce any pressure directly onto the spine. 
If it is that you are wearing something underneath this, then you can take these off. And then what happens is, so these strips here, this is the same hook and loop that you have on the inside. And then you have the, you have the actual hook on here. So being able to take these off, and put them back on again, depending on what you're doing with the bag or how you need this to be set up, which is always tricky when you're trying to do stuff hanging from a tree. Um, you've got that option. Outside of that though, there's not as much protection through the back panel as you might like. However, this is a military backpack that for me I'm using as a civilian, so, I kind of appreciate why it's been set up like this. Two little bits that I did forget to, forgot to mention is, you also have some little grab handles. I love grab handles, but having these on the side here, if you did maybe want to travel with this, they, you probably would definitely be able to travel with this. It's the perfect size for this. In fact, I might take this to Germany actually. Anyway, um, you've got grab handles here on the side and then you have another larger grab handle here at the top. Getting back to the straps, the straps are contoured so that they fit perfectly onto your shoulders. And I will say that these straps are a mark of genius, mainly because of how wide they are and the amount of padding that they have in here. The padding, like I like to refer to as that Goldilocks padding, it's not too tough, but it's not too soft. It does the job right. There's air mesh under here as well to make sure that you can get air to ventilate through there. Is it going to stop you from sweating underneath? No. But what it will do is it'll allow some air to get through there to help it to dry once it, when it comes off, which really helps. But underneath, there is actually, similar to the frame sheet, so there's, there's, a, there's a bit of plastic through here, and what that does is helps to disperse that weight across your shoulders um, evenly, so it, it makes it very nice to wear. The one thing that I was expecting with this and was surprised that wasn't on here is that there are no load adjusters. I was definitely surprised that that wasn't on here. But I, again, I, I guess for the type of use that they are expecting from this, they didn't think that load adjusters would be useful. So yeah, didn't add them. Now coming down, you do have some pals webbing on here. So if you want to, you can pass comms through here. You can put hydration through here. You get down onto the chest and you have a sliding uh, sternum strap. Now I will say that this does slide around a little bit too much when you've got it in your hands like this. However, when it's on, luckily the tension of this pulling stops it from sliding up and down. When I first got this, I was a little bit worried about how freely that moves up and down, but in practice, walking with this, haven't had any issues. Sternum strap, standard kind of buckles, but also to make sure uh, you have more of, uh, you have more hook and loop on here to make sure that that extra webbing isn't gonna get in your way. And plus, there is some really tough elastic on here. So as you're moving, you still get a little bit of freedom movement through your shoulders and through your chest. Coming down onto the bottom of the straps, I know I already mentioned these before, but you do have some quick release buckles. So should you need to, in an event where you need to ditch this bag as quickly as possible, I don't know, you've fallen into the river, generally people don't like to drown. It's just a thing. So you can pull on these and they will come open. I will say in practice with messing around in the woods and going for walks with my wife and daughters. I've not snagged it on anything and it's just kind of popped open or anything like that. They've, they've been fine. And then getting down to the bottom, then you've got the bit for, uh, you've got your bit for the, um, the belt. Now the belt, where is it that it passes through? It passes through here. So if you can see on this side, it's exactly the same on the other side, but the belt passes through this to aid you in passing it through there because you've got to get it through here and then out the other side. There is some hook and loop here at the bottom. Which, get open. But there is your hook and loop. So you can pass it through that to make sure that it's right. And then you can press that down to make sure that it stays uh, to make sure that it stays in place. I'm glad I've been able to test this. Halifax, the Halifax for me 
is the difference between, I know I mentioned this earlier, and that's not me casting any sort of shade on Helicon Tex, but the Halifax for me shows the difference between Helicon Tex and direct action. Again, not to, I'm not saying that Helicon Tex are bad, I freaking love Helicon Tex. But if you're wanting to take it up to the next tier, that's where direct action is. Now, there are some things that are more military designed for this though, given the company that it's come from. So you do have to, there are some concessions that you have to make with this. Mainly it's through that back panel because it's designed to fit over, um, it's designed to fit over some armor. Um, so you, you, you kind of have to take that into account. That's not to say, however, with all of the walks that I've done that I've had any issues with this whatsoever. It just doesn't have that full kind of back support that you'd get with some other bags. It's a military, desi designed for military use, jump capable bag. But it's also a very good example of what direct action do and yeah as I said I'm very glad that I managed to test this out. Now at this point I want to give a huge thank you and a big shout out to Military First. Military First did send this to me. Uh, I've worked with Military First now for five, six years. They're an awesome company uh, in the UK. They're in England just outside the border of the Kingdom of the Moorlands, a stone's throw from here. Um, they deal with military equipment outdoors equipment, anything that you need for your daily adventures you can pretty much pick up from Military First. They're an awesome team and I want to give them a huge shout out. I do have a discount code. If you use the code MORELAND10 you can get 10% discount off non-sales items. Again, I just need to stress that point, it's non-sales items. If it's already in the sale then you won't get an extra 10% off but hopefully this will be able to save you some money if what you're after isn't in the sale. So yes, I'll leave some of their links below so that you can see more from Military First and you can see more from the uh, Direct Action Halifax Medium. I know I keep forgetting to say the medium part. Um, I'll also leave some of my social media links below so that you can see more from me here on Moreland Rudy C and my sister channel, Moreland the Tactical, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander, and stay UDC. How's that? Bloody hell. Annoying that is. Anyway, not annoying. Hook and loop here. Hook and loop here. Keeps, keeps, keeps getting stuck. Hook and loop. I'll stick a hook in any loop, and he'll just want to stay in there. It's very uh, incestuous hook and loop is. It'll just do whatever it wants with whoever it wants. Anyway, where were we? I feel like. Can you remember the? I'm a scout. That, that guy, I find, I feel sometimes when I'm doing the, uh, I'm following me on social media with Moreland or EDC and Moreland Tactical and whether you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, uh, uh, stay safe, stay Moreland, stay DD. I feel like I, I, I'm a scout man. Kind of a little bit. Anyway, I don't know what day is this out. It might be a Sunday, it could be a Wednesday. I'm trying to catch up on stuff, but whatever day it's out, I hope you're all having a good day. If it's the weekend, I hope you've had a nice weekend. I hope you've been able to have a nice relaxing break. If it comes out on the Wednesday, then I hope you're having a good and productive Wednesday or well, week so far. It's only a few more sleeps till the weekend. And same compliment if you're at the weekend, so yes.